Hello, welcome back to Motor Mint Garage. Um, so today I'm going to be, we're going to be discussing and going through um, the Motoscope Pro, um, which is what we have here. Um, essentially, um, this is a, you know, it's an LED unit. Um, they retail for around 400 quid so they're not a cheap not a cheap item by any means um, but that you you are getting a good quality item for your money um, not everybody's cup of tea there's lots of choices out there this is just what I like um, and this is what I've chosen for my projects uh, I currently have two of these um, and there's a reason for that, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, so I believe it's 120 mil um, long by 60 mil high, I believe. I think it's 60 mil, um, and they're 18 mil thick, so they're not very thick at all. Have a couple of mounting points on the back. Um, as you can see, they're all sealed up nicely. You know, you're not going to get any weather in these. Um, so, um, let's. So, firstly, when you when you get these, if you just buy this, just this this unit itself, you can use it as is. So, you could use it. It will, you know, it give you your voltage, it give you your speed, it give you your your revs. Um, it give you the time, it do all those functions, um, no problem. Um, but what it won't do is you won't have any what you might call idiot lights, right? So if you're removing all of your current display, you won't have like your engine warning light, your oil pressure light, your indicator light, your neutral light. Um, so in a lot of cases, you know, you're going to, you're going to want to retain that. So in, you need to use or also acquire one of these breakout boxes. This is a breakout box A. Um, I'm not going to go too much into these right now because they're going to have their own video. Um, of which I also have two. Um, I have an A, sorry, an A which is the little one and the B which is the big one which leads me into why do I have two of these displays so this display here I bought for a previous it was on a previous project um, a good few years ago now maybe six years ago maybe maybe even longer um, and this was on um, this was on an air cooled bike, right? So, you know, um, you, because it was on an air cooled bike, you don't have, or on that particular air cooled bike, you don't have a temperature sensor, for example. Um, you don't, you didn't have an oil temperature, you know, you, it, it was, you know, just a big air cooled bike. So, in the, in these, in this case, all I needed was the breakout box A. Which would run my indicators, my my dip and main beam light, my neutral light, you know, all of the basics which I needed for that bike was controlled by this. Um, one of my questions is is why can't Motor Gadget incorporate that this into this, and maybe make it a bit thicker, but just have everything in there. But that's that's another argument altogether. Um, so fast forward a few years um i'd obviously sold the bike but i'd removed this display um put back on the original stuff and i just kept this in a drawer for for a later time um, and i decided that i wanted to use the motor gadget stuff for this current build that i'm doing now um so very different bike water cooled you know so i need you know i need a, a temperature sensor and and what not so I can keep an eye on everything that's going on um, so 
I bought a breakout box B, which as you can see is bigger and it has more inputs, right? So that I could run the various different sensors that I need, right? Very simple. That's how that works. Um, I will go into the break bo breakout boxes later in a later video. Um, that's why I have that. But the problem was, was the this older version was not compatible with the newer breakout box because they were so many years apart. Okay, so you can, I could have sent this off to Motor Gadget and have it updated, um, but by the time you took, I can't remember how much it was. I think it was a hundred and fifty quid. Um, for them to do it um, then you had the shipping um, I, th I think I think with it all recorded and insured I think I think it worked out to be about 250 pounds um, they're only 400 pounds each so I opted to to replace it with a more modern one which be it pretty much the same runs the the other box and the only really discernible difference between the two of them is as you can see on this one and as you can probably see on this one the little motor gadget emblem is is slightly different um apart from that there's no real difference apart from obviously the the barcode on the back tells you how old it is and what it, apparently what is compatible with um i didn't know that this is was all news to me when it happened so anyway moving on um so i've got this loosely set up as a bench test just so i can demonstrate some of the things that it can do and also how you can sort of roughly get it set up as i go along i'm going to do each item that i'm using individually and then i'm going to build a bench test along this bench uh, with all the components in it um, including the old wiring loom uh, that's being grafted um the m unit blue the everything so because it will all the wiring loom will be built on this bench before it goes into the bike um there will be test fitting along the way but that's the plan um so for example okay you see we how we're on speed at the moment if i take the, the i mean actually so you have um, a black wire which is a ground and you have a red which is your permanent live and you have a brown which is your switch live it needs to be earthed not earth sorry it needs to be fused on both of those um, 12 volt inputs um, it's not earthed in this particular instance because not much can go wrong um, but in a bike it can be a very different thing um, I believe don't quote me on it you be in your manual but I think they need to be uh, uh, sorry fused to one amp I think but like I say double check because this is all just coming out of my head um, so first off um, so that's those wires covered these two the, the purple and the, um, the blue are fairly irrelevant they're for camber systems um, and essentially we're going to have no involvement with that um, if you are looking to be utilizing this into a camber system then you know contact motor gadget and, and do your research before um, endeavoring to do that this orange wire here is the communication wire between the display and the breakout box so if you have this breakout box wired in underneath your tank with all of your um, your lights going into it, oil pressure, air, temperature, um, you know, indicators, all of that stuff, then the only wire that will be going up to this to carry that information will be this orange wire. It is all computed in this little box and then sent down this wire at Pacific voltages to be read by this guy very clever um, yes very smart unit 
and that way it enable you to have your indicators a little green light on there flashing to tell you your indicators are on you know um, this white wire is where your speedo will connect in my case this will be a GPS unit yours might be the original speed sensor or it may be a um, when you buy these these come with a small hall effect sensor I believe and magnets um, which is you know there's nothing wrong with doing that um, I've opted for a digital a GPS just just to keep the wire into the minimal and keep it simple but if I just pulse the speed you see um, it's reading the speed there um, the yellow one is for your rev counter I cannot emphasize enough that you must not connect this yellow wire to a hot side um, I've not done it, but Motor Gadget are very um, explicit in their instructions not to connect this to the hot side of the coil packs. Um, it must go to the cold side, um, and I'm guessing it's probably the same situation when you have it on a bench test like this. So if I just tap on there, you can see how the graph is going up. That would be your rev counter. You see it's got the little thing that follows it back. It's very cool. See that there it goes. Uh, you'll notice that this particular display is flashing when it hits a certain revs, and that's because um, that's like a gear shift, like a pre um, rev limiter uh, light which you can set up. So um, again, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but you don't have to have it. Um, you can use it or not use it. In my case, I used to use it. I've decided that I now don't like it. Um, and then what you're left with, essentially, is this green wire, which this will be directly connected to your to your inf interface button, if you like. So momentary switch on your handlebars. In my case, they're going to be built into my switch box, um, which is another part of this project but this is how you access so if I hold down you have to be in um, your current speed if I hold this down and then there you go you've got your setup you can set up all your different items within there I'll hold it down again I can come out of that menu and then you know you can you've got all your configurations parameters you can set up your messages so ABS oil switch oil pressure oil temp H2O temp uh, voltage whether your engine's on or off um, fuel you know you get the idea um, and also when you're in the, the, the sort of main display if you like um, if you just touch the button so you get your trip A, your trip B your odometer, your time um, your volt um, acceleration and you can program this you can program this just to have your speed and your revs if you like you don't have to have loads of stuff on it or you can have all of it if you hold it down for a split second and you see how you get this block up here and that allows you to scroll through the smaller menu which is exactly the same as the big menu um, but obviously you can program that with different stuff you could just have like your time or your trip on that it depends on how you particularly want to set this item up. Um, as I say, it's very cool and it's all one singular button controlled. It's um, a quick one second press to flip through the menu you're on, then two seconds ish to flip between these two, and then three for the um, the 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 menus inside the speedo if you like um, 
which then you know you can do all your configuring and your setup and you know how you want it to be um, this will all be um, supplemented by other um, motor gadget items um, such as the the M unit blue um, but really this is just a brief a brief um, demonstration of how this looks and roughly how it works on a on a bench in a test bed if you like um, in the next video I will go on to the next item I think it'll probably be the M unit blue that we'll be going through and I'm going to show you how, how you can bench test that like this um, have everything up and running um, get your Bluetooth connected um, make sure everything's working um, and we're going to go through everything um, that's going to be in this system and then I will build a an entire test bed on this bench um, and we'll slowly get everything running so you can see everything how everything works before it goes into the bike anyway that's enough for this one thanks for watching see you later